industry may be well behind us in the rearview mirror, but that doesn't mean that the game industry is done dropping big announcements. Besides Nintendo revealing a new OLED display version of the Switch, one that still doesn't run games above a 720p resolution in handheld mode, publisher Nacon also held their own digital press conference, revealing more details about the hotly anticipated open-world racer Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. As stated in our prior video discussing Nacon's take on the online driving franchise, we hoped that our worries regarding Solar Crown would be assuaged as more details of the game were revealed. While we have certainly learned a lot of new things about the game, we have also found more reasons to be concerned about the fate of Solar Crown. With that in mind, and after collecting our thoughts for the past few weeks, here are four reasons we are still concerned about the new Test Drive Unlimited. Like many games in the AAA industry, Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown was initially revealed with a pre-rendered trailer, one that was heavy on automotive close-ups and light on everything else. Considering how standard practice this kind of approach is within the gaming industry, we initially felt no cause for concern. However, Nacon would later release a second trailer for Solar Crown titled Head to Head, which while longer and more intriguing than its preceding teaser, remained both extremely light on tangible information and entirely pre-rendered. At this point, we were understandably worried about Solar Crown, as continued usage of pre-rendered footage is typically a sign that something is wrong with the game. Still, after several people in the comments of our prior video implored us to wait for Nacon's digital presser before casting judgment, we decided to maintain a hope that these two trailers were mere preamble for the big gameplay reveal at the publisher's main event. Unfortunately, Nacon decided instead to triple down, presenting a third pre-rendered trailer for the game and zero actual gameplay footage at their Kinect event. At this point, it's safe to say we have good reason to be worried about the new TDU. While many publishers have relied upon pre-rendered trailers to stoke initial excitement for their games, few have relied as heavily on them as Nacon has with Solar Crown, and the few that have are prime examples of why over-reliance on cinematics and game trailers is a massive red flag. Perhaps the best recent example of this cinematic-focused approach is Cyberpunk 2077, which spent years represented almost exclusively by pre-rendered trailers. When a sizable amount of gameplay was finally revealed, it was done just prior to the game's release, and when the game was finally in players' hands, it became painfully clear why. Perhaps the online racer will beat the odds and live up to the expectations bestowed by its pre-rendered footage, but unless actual gameplay is revealed sooner rather than later, chances are high that Solar Crown will leave us massively disappointed when it crosses the finish line. As important as the car list and driving physics are to creating a fantastic open-world racer, neither of these factors mean much without the proper setting. In this regard, the Test Drive Unlimited franchise has always hit the metaphorical nail on the head with its locales. Both Oahu and Ibiza represent the ideal holiday destinations to complement the series' themes of automotive affluence, and the environment of Solar Crown is set to continue that trend. With an enticing combination of both natural beauty and exciting nightlife, Hong Kong is a fantastic fit for the franchise, one that builds on its predecessors by providing a wider range of environmental variation than ever before in a TDU game. With this in mind, one might wonder why such an ideal setting would be an issue for Solar Crown. However, while the massive skyscrapers and enormous scale of Solar Crown's location are the game's greatest asset, they may also prove to be the game's greatest obstacle. Solar Crown's Hong Kong map is set to be a one-to-one -one scale recreation of the actual location, filled with all the same dense jungles and high-rise packed cityscapes as the one in the real world, and as a result, the game might be a nightmare to run on anything but the most capable PCs. Worse still, while developer KT Racing has a long history of making exceptional racing games, they have minimal experience creating open-world environments, much less on the scale of a Test Drive Unlimited game. Considering that even seasoned open-world racing developers like Playground Games limit the scale of their maps to ensure acceptable performance, getting a richly detailed full-scale map of Hong Kong to work at all, much less while meeting modern graphical standards and a stable frame rate, feels like an impossible task to complete on current gen, and that's before even accounting for the ports to last gen and the Nintendo Switch. We hope to be proven completely wrong come the game's release, but for now, 
the mountains and skyscrapers of Solar Crown sit on a very shaky foundation. Under ideal circumstances, creating a massive open-world game full of ultra-high fidelity, performance-taxing buildings and foliage would remain an arduous, multi-year undertaking. This is especially true of an open-world racer, where the high speed of movement exacerbates the demands placed on a console or PC to run at an acceptable and high level of performance. As previously stated, while KT has a massive amount of experience with racing games, their inexperience with large-scale open worlds means that the next Test Drive Unlimited is being produced under less than ideal circumstances. And while issues with inexperience may be rectified with a long enough production period, time is not on Solar Crown's side. While information from the last Nacon Connect was thin on the ground, we did learn Solar Crown's release date, September 22, 2022. On the surface, that seems like an adequate amount of development time, especially considering that the initial announcement of Solar Crown was made in July of 2020 and that development of the game began months prior to that. However, the more we look at the circumstances surrounding Solar Crown, the tighter that release schedule becomes. While some may cite annually released games like Call of Duty as proof that KT has more than enough time to make the next TDU, doing so would ignore the fact that each Call of Duty is the result of multiple studios working for a minimum of three years on each game, all of which have reused assets and focus on small, closed levels. In contrast, Solar Crown's Hong Kong will be a massive open world requiring a huge number of unique assets to bring to life making the just over two years of total development time available far more concerning than it initially seems. It's even more concerning when looking at games with similarly tight release schedules like Fallout New Vegas, which even after maximizing production time by using a large number of pre-made assets, remained poorly optimized and bug-infested at launch. And in our playtime, we noted far more blemishes than we did in Fallout 3. It's baffling to see such technical ineptitude slammed against an otherwise marvelous achievement. Troubling though this may be, by far the most worrying aspect is the fact that, as mentioned before, unlike so many titles that reveal extensive gameplay demos years prior to their official launch, Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown still has zero gameplay to show at all despite multiple trailers and a release date just over a year away. Hopefully publisher Nacon will have the common sense to delay the release and allow KT to actually finish the game before launch, but for now, Solar Crown is well on its way to joining the likes of Cyberpunk and Fallout 76 as a prime example of a rushed and broken game. In our last video discussing our worries on Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown, we took time to note our distaste with the franchise's shift in tone and expressed our concern that Solar Crown would continue the trend. Considering that a few people in the comments reacted to this section of the video by accusing us of being dirty communists, we would like to take the opportunity to clarify our position. As stated in our last video, we have absolutely no problem with Test Drive Unlimited's themes of wealth and automotive affluence, nor do we take issue with the fact that the main goal of the game is getting an expensive house with a garage full of exotic supercars. If anything, these themes and goals are pillars of the game's appeal. However, we do take issue with how the framing of these goals and themes has changed from the first to the second game. In the first game, the player is a car enthusiast who works their way to riches through racing. In the second game, the player does the same thing, but only after an entitled trust fund baby offhandedly decides to let the peasant player join her circle of well-off buffoons. The first game's narrative was a meritocracy where the player got rich for personal fulfillment and automotive self-actualization, the second game's narrative gatekeeps upward mobility behind a little club of aloof power brokers for whom riches are flaunted to validate a superiority complex. Somebody needs to give you some advice on style. Hmm, come see me. I mean, after I finished beating you. Unfortunately, 10 years after Test Drive Unlimited 2 and after what we saw at the last Snake on Connect, it's safe to say that Solar Crown is going to lead hard on the flaunt wealth part of the series history. That said, while a city of poker chip skyscrapers may foreshadow the grating glorification of wealth monsters, it may also foreshadow gambling mechanics in the final game. Considering that TDU2 had an in-game casino where the player could bet on slot machines and poker to win credits and cars, it's safe to assume that a similar gambling system will return in Solar Crown. 
However, considering that Grand Theft Auto V did their own online casino, one that's use of real money was so close to real-world gambling that 50 different countries banned games within said casino for breaking regional gambling laws, it's a small leap for publisher Nacon to see how normalized and lucrative these predatory gambling mechanics are and deciding to charge real money for casino-based loot boxes in Solar Crown. Certain articles of clothing, specific cars, and even payouts of in-game currency may be held hostage behind loot boxes while a deliberately miserly progression cycle coerces players to spend real money to speed up the process. Worse still, even if the items in Solar Crown's loot boxes aren't overtly advantageous to gameplay and are just cosmetic, Fortnite skins have proven the power of social pressure and digital classism in ruining the experience for players who don't or can't pay while they play especially in an online multiplayer-focused game like Solar Crown. There's a level of hostility in the design. If you don't buy in, you aren't merely limited in your options of expression, you are actively denied control over the most basic element of how you choose to look in the virtual world. In the present political climate, suffering through a video game narrative that glorifies the wealth divide is certainly uncomfortable. But the possibility that Nacon will use predatory and addictive gambling mechanics that create an actual wealth divide within the MMO world of Solar Crown is simply horrifying. Well, there you have it. Those are the reasons we are still worried about Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. Anybody out there have their own worries about the new TDU? Maybe you're actually really excited and looking forward to the game. Or maybe you just want to let us know we're a bunch of libtard soy boy cultural Marxists. Regardless, feel free to let us know in the comments, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and ring the bell to see more videos like this one from the classiest cavern on the World Wide Web.